Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everyone back to another video, uh, kicking the week off with a collection update. Um, got a bunch of stuff here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. Uh, we'll just do the movies and stuff first. I had already shown these in the last video that I did, but I did get the despecialized editions of all the original Star Wars films in their original versions. Um, on Blu-ray. I uh, got these off of eBay. These are pretty easy to find um, online, whether you want to purchase your own copies or download just to have the video files of it. Um, they're pretty easy to get a hold of, but um, I had actually ordered these last month, and I was going to send them out to Colorado, but the post office had lost it, so I contacted the seller and they were able to send me a replacement set, and they showed up yesterday. Um, ironically, and I even said this in the video, just before I was about to film the video, they showed up at the mailbox. So I just went out and grabbed them and threw them in there. So we have Star Wars, the original classic, and this is the old, again, as you can see, uh, CBS Fox VHS cover as the artwork, which is a big reason why I wanted to get it, really enjoy it. And they also have an insert artwork. So you get some concept art of C-3PO and R2-D2, which is really cool. And I I watched a little bit of these. I kind of just watched certain parts, and they look great. I mean, they look, you know, for a bootleg set, they look pretty damn good um, for a Blu-ray you know, bootleg Blu-ray set, not just DVD. But these look pretty amazing for uh, Harmy is the guy that did them. Um, they look awesome. And then even the discs have pretty awesome artwork. Not the crappy, flimsy, fake kind of stickers. These are really high-quality stickers they put on there for the artwork. So you get the movie on disc one, and then you get uh, disc two is all the features. Um all these are pretty much the same. They have some fan-made documentaries, which is pretty cool. And then all pretty much the archival stuff from back in the day is on these sets. And then there's trailers, TV spots, deleted scenes, bloopers, toy commercials. Like, pretty much anything that you can think of with the original Star Wars films is on here, which is awesome. And then... We have The Empire Strikes Back. Always loved that artwork. And there's the back. And same thing with this. You know, the movie looks amazing. And that's some really cool concept art as well. And the features are pretty cool. Again, it's all the, the old school making of documentaries, which have never really been released. Except on the, I think if you buy the Complete Saga Blu-ray set, most of that stuff's on there. But I don't want, first of all, the versions of the original movies are in there. And I don't want the prequels. I don't need the prequels on Blu-ray. Um, and then again, deleted scenes and bloopers and stuff like that is on here. Which, again, is really cool stuff to see, in my opinion. And then there's the disc art. And then last but certainly not least, we have Return of the Jedi, which has always been my favorite. And I definitely want to get a poster of that artwork. I've always loved that artwork. There's the back. And again, the discs. And then the reverse artwork, which is really cool. Get the glare off of that. There we go. Um, on this one... In addition to all the features and stuff, there's a little fan-made, um, like, mini-movie where they kind of play out the trilogy as an old Nintendo game, which looks really cool. And then also, one of the documentaries on here is called, um, I think it's something, ah, damn it, I can't remember what it's called now. It's like the magic of Star Wars, or the magic and the mem. I don't know, hold on, let me... The Magic and the Mystery of Star Wars, I think it's what it's called. Let me just... It's bothering me, so I want to... It's not what I wanted. I hit the wrong button. Let 
the weather's kind of crappy here, so the signal is bad. I think it's called The Magic and the Mystery of Star Wars. And it came on Fox when the special editions came out in 1997, and Howie Long hosted it. And I remember watching that when it was on, and having it on here is really cool. So once again, um, I can't really be happy about these enough. Finally, I finally bought them. I, I've been wanting to get them for a long time, and finally, I just said the hell with it, and... And grabbed them. Finally got the original unaltered Star Wars trilogy on Blu-ray. And they look great. And features and everything. So can't complain about that. Alright. Next up I got a triple feature Blu-ray set. This was only 6 bucks, And it was brand new. Um, and it had the slipcover and everything. And these are three movies that I do enjoy. So I figured uh, why not pick them up, especially for six bucks? So we have a triple feature of American History X, A History of Violence, and True Romance, which is the director's cut version, which is the only version I watch. But three great movies on here. Um, I don't really know what the theme would be, like, I guess, crime. I don't know. But uh, three great movies on here, and I can get rid of these two on DVD. True Romance I'll keep because it, the packaging is really nice. Um... So I'll keep the DVD for that. But all the features from the DVDs of American History X and the History of Violence are all on here. So there's no reason to have them. But again, great movies. Um, each movie comes on its own disc, which is what I love about these um, Warner Brothers uh, multi-feature Blu-rays. Each movie gets its own disc, which is awesome. So in case people were wondering what the disc art looked like, there's American History X, which was the same as the DVD. And A History of Violence, which was the same as the DVD, and True Romance. So there you go. But all three are movies that I really enjoy. They're great. Um, I guess I guess crime. I guess they kind of fit. I mean, I don't know how American History X would be. I mean, there's stuff about crime in it, but I wouldn't consider it that type of movie. Um, but yeah, three movies that I really enjoy. Um, yeah, ignore the $20 price tag on there, because that's not how much I paid for it. Next up, we have a rock film, which I do enjoy this movie. The only shitty thing about this Blu-ray is it doesn't have any of the features from the DVD, uh, except the commentary track by the director, but it is The Scorpion King, which, again, I do enjoy this movie. Um, it's I think it's really underrated because you don't hear anyone talk about this, in my opinion. Um, you know, a lot of the early rock movies, Dwayne Johnson, you know, whatever people know him as, you don't really hear people talk about them. This one, The Rundown, Walking Tall, even Doom. Like, you really don't hear, I at least, don't hear a lot of people talking about Doom. But um, anyway, I found it for a couple dollars. It was six bucks on Blu-ray. So I figured, why not? I, I'm keeping my DVD because it has a bunch of features on there, which I don't know why they didn't put on the Blu-ray. Like I said, the only feature that transferred over was the director's commentary. Uh, there's an extended cut on the DVD, there's deleted scenes, there's a video commentary with The Rock, like there's a bunch of shit on there that's definitely worth keeping the the, uh, the DVD, excuse me. Um, but yeah, why they couldn't transfer all that over is beyond me, especially when it's the same company. But anyway, that's the Scorpion King. The only one that I like. Um, I've never seen any of the sequels, I don't plan on it. Um, and I did get a few DVDs. Uh, first up, I got a UFC event. This is UFC 60, uh, Hughes versus Gracie, which was Hoist Gracie's return to the octagon. Um, he only had one. It was a one-off fight, and then um, I think he got in trouble for steroids or something like that, um, and then he never fought in UFC again. Um, but, yeah, um, other than that... Um, I don't, uh, Jeremy Horn is the only other fighter that I recognize on here, but I'm sure it'll be a good event. But yeah, I wanted to get it for obviously the, the main event. Um, I do enjoy uh, both Matt Hughes and Hoist Gracie. They're great fighters. So there we go. Another UFC for the collection. Uh, this is a TV show that I picked up today at Walmart. Um, it is the complete series of Max Headroom. Uh, Max Headroom, for those that don't know, was this really zany 80s show where it was about like corporate America and um you know corruption and a lot of stuff that you know has come true 
in in recent years and everything. Um, and this was this show was definitely ahead of its time, but it was a really cool show. I've seen some some of the episodes and reruns and everything, and I'm looking forward to checking out the show again. The only thing that's not included on here was there was a uh, like a TV movie that preceded the show. It's for some reason it's not on the DVD. I guess they couldn't get the rights or whatever. Um, but I think that's pretty easily available online, so I can just burn my own copy. But yeah, this is a really cool show that, um, again, was way ahead of its time. So there we go. And then I did get one more TV series. This is a uh, Blu-ray DVD combo pack. It is season two of Stranger Things. And this is the Target exclusive uh, collector's edition, which comes in a VHS case, which is awesome. I do have the first season of Stranger Things, which came in a similar packaging, um, but that's in storage. I have to definitely get over there some point soon and start pulling, pulling all my movies out so I can go through them and get rid of stuff and upgrade and all that. But yeah, I've actually never seen a single episode of Stranger Things. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It seems like something I would be interested in. And this was on sale. This was only 10 bucks at Target. So that's why I grabbed it as well. It was really cheap. So I figured, why not? Um, and uh, maybe one day soon, when I grab season one out of storage, I will watch both of these. We'll see. And uh, yeah, this is just a really, really nice addition. It's a DVD and Blu-ray, which is cool. And then it comes with behind-the-scenes photos as a bonus item. So again, pretty cool stuff here. And season three, I think, is coming out later this year. So looking forward to uh, to checking the show out, and we'll continue to, to watch them. We'll see, you know. All right, and the rest is all music. I got a bunch of records and some CDs. We'll do the CDs first. I did get one single. It is uh, Give It Away by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Great song from a great album. And uh, I saw this CD single for five bucks. I'm like, why not? So on here, you have four different versions of the song. You have the album version, the Rasta mix, the 12 inch mix, and the single mix. And then it also has the Chili Peppers cover of Search and Destroy, the Iggy Pop song, which was featured on the first uh, Beavis and Butthead soundtrack, the Beavis and Butthead experience. Um, yeah, it was a B side. For this single and then it got kind of tucked away until that soundtrack came out and then it was thrown on there so there we go and then i got a couple of ted nugent cds um there's another record store that opened up here my dad actually mentioned it to me but i thought he was talking about the one that was already here and we rode past it yesterday and i said oh there's a new one. He's like that's the one i meant i'm like oh i didn't know so i popped in there today I got a couple of CDs and mostly records, and it was a really nice shop. Um, the shop looks cool. The records are, are organized very nicely. Same with the CDs. Uh, the, 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 the owner was really cool, and the prices were decent. That's why I got a bunch of stuff, because it was decently priced. Um, but anyway, the CDs that I got, I got three Ted Nugent CDs, which I don't have. The only stuff that I have of his on CD is the old out of control box set the double live gonzo and live at hammersmith uh, and that's it uh, but i did get cat scratch fever great album i do again have this on vinyl but i picked it up on cd um and this is when kind of ted nugent started to sing all his own songs and everything because the first couple albums um he didn't sing everything which a lot of people don't know a lot of people think that uh ted nugent just sang every song ever. No, Derek St. Holmes was the original singer who would go on to start a band with Brad Whitford from Aerosmith. Um, yeah, I don't think he's on this album. I think it's just Ted. Because he would be like in and out of the band. No, he is on this album. Okay. Um, but this is towards the late 70s when Ted Nugent started doing every, all the vocals himself. Um, and I think most of this album is Ted Nugent on vocals. I think Derek St. Holmes only sings a few, but uh, the title song is definitely Ted Nugent, um, but yeah, great album. And then I got a couple of his later albums. Uh, these two, unfortunately, are not on vinyl. Um, I have quite a few Ted Nugent. I have most of his stuff on vinyl uh, in terms of studio albums. 
um, and I have Double Live Gonzo, Intensity, and Ten Cities, which are both great live albums. Um, but I would maybe one day these will get re-released as, uh, you know, Saturday yesterday was Record Store Day, so maybe they'll be like an exclusive or something. But this one is Spirit of the Wild, which came out in 1995. So there you go. They were still doing vinyl back then, but not um, as frequently. Um, I don't know any of the songs on here. I've never heard any of these. But looking forward to it. And it was only five bucks. I mean, it's not like I spent a buttload of money on it. And this one is called Crave Man, which came out in 2002. So again, um, they weren't really doing vinyl at the time. And again, these songs I don't really know. But always looking forward to checking out uh, Ted Nugent stuff. Whether it's a, a live concert or... Stuff I haven't gotten into yet, I'm always looking forward to it. A great guitar player, great singer, and, you know, I know a lot of people don't like him, but he's smart, he knows what he's talking about, he's not afraid to share his opinion, and he does his own thing, you know, can't go wrong with that. And the rest are all bootlegs, um, CD bootlegs that I bought. This one, um, I had ordered, and the guy never said he shipped it out, never got a tracking number, nothing. And I requested a refund, which I got, but then the CD just showed up. And I was like, okay, I guess I basically got it for free. But um, this is Aerosmith uh, Offenbach Rocks from Germany, um, October 24th, 1976. Uh, this was Aerosmith's first European tour. Um, I've heard this one before. I've never owned it. And the quality is pretty good. Not too bad. And it's a, it's a good set list on here. Um, this is the Rocks tour, so... Uh, Rocks is definitely represented, and then all your classic 70s Aerosmith is on here. So that's uh, another great Aerosmith, 70s Aerosmith bootleg to add to the collection. Um, they're doing a residency in Vegas, and apparently they sound amazing. Um, I'm not going to go out there, obviously, for that. But, you know, they're playing a lot of 70s material, which is what I like to hear. That's just me. But, yeah, so, all right. Aerosmith's still kicking ass, which is awesome. Next up, I have a Bon Jovi one. This is called Live from London, Complete Third Night. And this is from 1995. They did do a video from this tour uh, from the London show. I don't know which show it is or if it's a collective uh, arrangement. of I don't know. Um, but this is from uh, June 25th, 1995. It's the complete show spread across three discs. And then to fill out the, the remainder of the time, there's one, two, three, four, five songs from the two previous nights on here. Um, I don't know if the other two nights are available as bootlegs. I'm sure they are. Bon Jovi's a pretty popular bootleg, you know, titles. But uh, we'll see. You know, if I can find them, great. If not, that's okay too. But yeah, this is pretty cool. And they um they toured with Van Halen. Uh, Van Halen um, opened for Bon Jovi actually on this tour, which I know a lot of. A lot of Van Halen fans are upset about, but who cares, you know? Whatever. Next up is Cinderella. This one is called Eastern Shelter from Tokyo, Japan, October 1st, 1991. Cinderella, I think, is one of the most underrated hair metal bands. Um, you know, they were just so good. And I don't think people realize how good they were. And it's a shame that there's issues between the members and stuff. Because I would love for them to get back together and do a tour, because I would definitely go see him. Uh, Tom Kiefer is still touring and doing music and stuff, and he sounds great, the lead singer. Um, he'll play some Cinderella stuff in his sets, but, um, you know, of course, he'll also do his solo stuff. But Tom, sound, you know, he had a lot of issues with his voice towards the end of their run and, and had surgery and said, you know, they said he'd never sing again, but I think he sounds better than ever. And, um, yeah, you know, I really enjoy Cinderella. Like I said, very underrated. Uh, hair metal band and you know, I wish the guys would settle their differences you know and just get back together and tour they don't even have to make music just go on tour you know I'll see them I uh, got an Iron Maiden one this one is from the Blaze Bailey era which I do enjoy Blaze Bailey um, I think he's an underrated singer he was also in a band called uh, Wolf's Bane before Iron Maiden which he went back to after he left and I think he just gets kind of unfairly discriminated for the Iron Maiden stuff, but I enjoyed the, the two albums that he did. And I think he has an interesting voice, but this one 
is from Madrid, Spain, May 19th, 1998, which is my birthday, actually, the day that I turned six years old. And this is number 100. I don't know what the, the number edition is, but this is number 100, so that's pretty cool. There we go. And the stuff on here, uh, you have both of the albums that he did, uh, The X Factor and Virtual Eleven, are represented and then of course all the classic Iron Maiden stuff is on here as well but again I enjoyed Blaze Bailey you know um, a different vocalist from Bruce Dickinson but still uh, interesting enough in my opinion to listen and then the last one that I got is Kiss this one is a live three complete which is recorded at the Richfield Coliseum November 29th 1992 parts of this were used for the Alive three album um, which is very underrated in my opinion. I love this era of Kiss. I love Eric Singer on the drums and Bruce Kulick still on the guitar. Uh, Revenge was a great album in my opinion. I think that was the last great album that Kiss did. Carnival of Souls kind of got thrown under the rug because of the reunion, but I think that's very good. But Revenge is better in my opinion. And yeah, uh, this you know I love this era of Kiss. Any bootlegs I can find from the Revenge era, I buy because I love that era so much and what's really cool is they played a lot of the older 70s stuff that they hadn't played in forever um songs like watching you firehouse i want you um what else what else uh that's about it for this one but you know they would play stuff like making love and you know a lot of those hidden gems that kiss did and there's many hidden gems that kiss did um you know, from the 70s and, and even the, the hair metal years, you know, uh, you know, Heaven's on Fire is on here, which has always been a great song. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff on here that's really good. But yeah, this is an era of Kiss that I absolutely adore. Um, any Anything regarding that era, whether it's a bootleg CD or a bootleg video or whatever, I try to grab because that stuff's really cool. All right. Now, the rest is all vinyl. Um, yesterday was record store day which I've never been to a record store day before. I did go to uh, the one, one of the record stores here, and I got a couple of things, not too much. Uh, there was a few that I was looking for, but the, the mouse is acting up. There we go. Um, there was an Allman Brothers one, which they sold out of. The Sopranos, the second Sopranos soundtrack, which I think was an online exclusive. And then um, the Howard Stern movie, the Private Parts soundtrack, got released on vinyl. But those are on eBay. They're fairly priced. I can grab those as kind of as I go along within the next month or two here. Um, I'm just really trying to save money since, you know, I only have a few paychecks left. And then I have to go get a job, but I'll be all right. Um, but, yeah, so I'll start with actually the Record Store Day stuff. We'll knock that out since it's more special. I did get a couple of singles. Um, first up is a Motorhead one. There was another Motorhead one, which they didn't have. Um, I'm going to try to get it. That one, it's a Ramones single. It's them doing Rockaway Beach and then the song Ramones, um, that they did. But this one is the 40th anniversary double seven inch picture disc, uh, celebration of the loudest, dirtiest bastard rock and roll of 1979. That's a very... Fair assessment for Motorhead, because Motorhead kicks ass. And this is the double single of Overkill and Bomber, which are seven inches, you know, obviously, for singles and their picture discs. I haven't opened any of these yet. Um, I do have my big record player and system in storage. I'm not going to grab that yet, but my smaller one should be here soon. Uh, so when that shows up, I can start, you know, spinning some records and having a good time. Um, but yeah, so... Overkill with the B-side of Too Late, Too Late, and then Bomber, the B-side is Over the Top. But yeah, this is a gatefold. You can kind of see it on there. And they're both picture discs, and I'm sure they're heavyweight vinyl. They feel pretty heavy in here. And uh, looking forward to seeing what the pictures look like. And of course, listening to some great Motorhead songs. Always been a fan of Motorhead. Um, definitely need to get more of their stuff on vinyl. And then the other single that I got is none other... Then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yes, uh, they did do, this is from I Am 8-Bit, which does a lot of pop culture releases. Um, they released a single 
of Pizza Power, which was from coming out of their shells, and the B side is Tubin. So there you go. And I thought this was really cool. Um, the, I, again, I haven't opened this up yet, but it comes in this like denim jacket type thing, and the patches are raised. Like this is a really cool looking thing. And then that's what the back looks like. And then it opens up. It looks like, and I guess the rec. Yeah, you'll just pull the record out, but you can see the Ninja Turtles like. The chess piece is right there. So, again, I haven't opened these yet, but I'll just wait till my record player. It's not like I can listen to them right now. But this is a really cool one, and I had to pick it up. I was like, oh, cool. Um, I would love, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I would love for coming out of their shells to get a vinyl release because it only ever came out on cassette tape. And I have the cassette tape. I guess it's in storage or something. I don't know where it is. But I definitely, you know... Would like to see that get a re-release. That's just me. I'm, I'm a Ninja Turtles nerd. So, you know, there you go. And then the other ones that I got, these are full-size records. First, I got Ace Fraley's uh, newest album, uh, Spaceman, which they did in an exclusive picture disc for for Record Store Day. This is really cool. I really enjoy that picture disc. Um, and then it also comes with a poster of the album artwork. I actually have still not listened to this album. I have it downloaded on my computer, but I just have not got around to listening to it yet. I've heard some of the songs on here. Um, Bronx Boy, I do like. That was the first single. And Rockin' With The Boys was the second single. I enjoyed that one as well. But I have not heard the rest of the album. I really need to, now that I have a physical copy of it, I will definitely sit down and... Uh, and enjoy this when my record player shows up, which should be either this week or early next week. Um, whenever it shows up, it shows up. But yeah, so I had to get this one. I'm a big Ace Kiss fan. You know, I like everything that he's done outside of Kiss, and this is no exception. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the album. And that's just really cool. Like, you get to see him dressed up in a NASA suit with a little stuffed Ace Fraley makeup in there. Like, that's pretty cool to me. You know, that's worth it. I'm running out of room here. That's okay. And then uh, the other two that I got, excuse me, were both soundtracks that were released on vinyl for the very first time. First up, we have Coneheads, which is a great movie. You know, a comedy classic, in my opinion. A movie that I've always enjoyed. And this is, again, the first time it's ever been released on vinyl. And it's on yellow vinyl. Again, I haven't opened it, but... Um, yeah, I, I really, as soon as this was announced, I was like, oh, I definitely have to get that. That's awesome. Um, and all, uh, a friend of mine asked me, does it have all the same songs? Because sometimes the rights will get mixed up or something. But no, this has every song from the original CD release. It has uh, Slash and Michael Monroe. Michael Monroe was in Hanoi Rocks, the Finnish rock band um, that was unfortunately famous for the fact that Vince Neil killed the lead singer in a car crash by accident. They do uh, Magic Carpet Ride, Soft Cell does Tainted Love, you have um, Kodachrome on here, R.E.M. is on here, Chili Peppers with um, uh, Soul to Squeeze. So there's a, there's a lot of great stuff on here. And it looks great. The cover looks great, blown up on vinyl. And I can't wait to spin this one. Yeah, I'm just going to start kind of putting putting the records at least on the floor getting to be too many and this next one the last one from record store day this was the number one this is the one i wanted the most and uh luckily they had it. it is the 25th anniversary edition first time on vinyl the crow yes the crow soundtrack finally or vinyly uh vinyly available um there was a bootleg of this that came out a few years ago, and I, of course, passed on that. But when I found out it was, was going to be a Record Store Day exclusive this year, I went through the roof because this has always been one of my favorite movie soundtracks, one of my favorite comic book movies, and I just I had to get this. I This was a, a no-brainer for me, and it's a gatefold. I can't wait to see what pictures they use on the inside. And again, it's the complete soundtrack. It's all the stuff that was put out on the CD years ago. And I'm just really looking forward to busting this open and listening to it. And it's uh, white and black, which is cool because the comic book was in black and white. And yeah, I'm looking forward to cranking this one loud. So finally got the Crow soundtrack officially on vinyl. You know, it's about time. All right. So I need to move my ankle a little bit. It's hurting. 
Um, I, and then the rest of these, these are just regular ones that I picked up the other day and then today. So I got a bunch of singles, actually. This first one was free. Um, the guy just, you know, I went to the one record store earlier in the week and then went back for record store day. He just gave this to me, you know, as a freebie. This one's uh, by a guy named Tom Pettibon. And he's a local guy because it was recorded in Baltimore. So there we go. And then the A side is called Books on MP3s. And the B side is called Turn the Pain. So, yeah, he told me it's kind of like Americana, you know, Bob Dylan type stuff. And I enjoy that kind of music. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'll give that a listen. You know, not a problem there. And um, the only one that wasn't a picture sleeve. Yeah, they're all okay. Was this one, which is Free All Right Now, which is a great song that I love. Uh, definitely, you know, wanted to grab this. And then the B-side is called Mouthful of Grass. So there's the B-side. And I did buy a couple of adapters because I really like those for the 45s. They just, they're easier to, to listen to because, you know, instead of trying to line up the circle on the record player, you just put that on the needle or the, uh, the spindle and you're good. But yeah, All Right Now is a great song. One of my favorite songs, to be honest. And, uh, you know, want to get more into free... So I figured I'd get this, you know, a couple dollars, why not? To get another David Lee Roth single, this is Yankee Rose. Great song from the uh, Eat em and Smile album, the, the, the first full-length solo album. And the B-side on here is Shy Boy, which is another great song. So there you go. Two great songs for the price of one, basically. Which I, I have all of, well, I have the first couple David Lee Roth solo albums. Um, on vinyl because they they released them on vinyl. I think the, and the only other the only one that I don't have on vinyl I think is just a little ain't enough. Um, no, actually I think your filthy little mouth got a international release. So yeah, so most of his solo stuff is on vinyl, which is great. And I got two uh, two more Cars singles. First up, we have uh, you might think. Blocking the picture. There we go. And then uh, the B side is Heartbeat City. Yeah, and a great album. Um, which is that was kind of the album that put them over over the top, which was Heartbeat City. And then they were only around for a couple more years, and then they they called it off. But you know, it is what it is. But yeah, you might think is you might think. Excuse me, is a great song. One of my favorite car songs, and definitely don't mind having the single. And then I got Shake It Up. The single of Shake It Up. And the B-side is Cruiser on here. So, And then, um, actually, I fudged up. This came out, Shake It Up came out before Heartbeat City. My bad. Um, but, yeah, a great album. Um, and I have all the car stuff on vinyl, um, except the, the last album they did in 2011, Move Like This. Uh, that is available on vinyl. I, I just don't have it. I have it on CD, but not vinyl. Um, next up, this is a, a band that was kind of a spinoff of the Joe Perry Project. This is uh, Fahrenheit with Full in Love. Um, David Hall and Charlie Farron were in Joe Perry's solo band, and then they broke off into their own band, which was called Fahrenheit. Um, David Hall changed his name to David Height, so they could, I don't know, just weird, weird Hollywood stuff. For some reason, he changed his name, but uh, this is the single for the first album, and it is the same song on both sides, so there you go. It's one of those deals. There's no B-side to it. It's just uh, the same song on both sides, but uh, they're, they're, they did one, no, they did a couple albums, but they're a little bit harder to find, but I saw this single, and I was like, oh, cool, you know, I'll grab that for, it was $1.99, so there you go. Yeah, not too bad. And then the last single that I got is none other than Axel F. Theme from Beverly Hills Cop, which is pretty cool. I do have Beverly Hills Cop on vinyl and CD. And the B-side to this is the instrumental piece shootout from the movie. But for the single, for the theme song, I was like, yeah, I'll grab that. That's not a bad bad deal. And then the rest of these, um, there's a 12-inch single, but the rest are all regular albums. I got my first Queen album. Uh, live Killers, which is in really good shape, um, and this is a great live album. I mean, this came out in '79, so all 
other big hits to that point is on here. So we will rock you. We are the champions. Killer Queen, Bicycle Race. I'm in love with my car. Uh, you're my best friend. Uh, Keep Yourself Alive, which is their first single. Don't Stop Me Now. Bohemian Rhapsody, Sheer Heart Attack, Tie Your Mother Down. Uh, it's all on here. And it's just a great album. And the, It's a gatefold. There's some really cool pictures in here. Might as well show. Yeah, it's just some really cool stuff in there. But yeah, this is the, the first Queen record that I, I don't have any other stuff of Queen on vinyl. But the Because the problem is, for me at least, I find them, but they're all the reissues. I don't want the reissues. I want the originals like this. You know, uh, granted they, you know, they're going to sound a little bit better and they're never going to wear out because they're 180 gram vinyl, but I like to get the old ones. That's just me. You know, I'm old school. Uh, but yeah, so next up I got Metal Health by Quiet Riot. Great album. I know this was really kind of their only hit, you know, um, but still a great album with, you know, great artwork. Of course, you have the, uh, the one, two punch of Metal Health and Come On, Feel the Noise. Um, but there's some other good stuff like Slick Black Cadillac. I like that. That's a good song. Thunderbird is a good song. So there's other good stuff on here. This was just the only one that got recognition. You know, but they did some other stuff like Mama, We're All Crazy Now, I think is a great song. Um, you know, Quiet Riot was good. It's just they kind of got stuck with that one hit wonder status. Well, kind of two hits with uh, Metal Health and, you know, Come On, Feel the Noise. And, you know, that was about it. <clears throat> All right. So next up, this is the 12-inch single. This is the special disco version of Miss You by the Rolling Stones, which I thought this was cool. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll pick that up. And the B-side is Far Away Eyes. But, yeah, they, um, after the album came out, they redid um, Miss You as a disco song, and it shot through the roof. It was a big hit for them and everything. So I was like, okay, cool. It was five bucks. I mean, why not, you know? Next up, we have Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. I love rock and roll. And this is an amazing shape. It looks like it's brand new there's a there's a couple little dings on here but nothing to be upset about this is an amazing shape and you know i enjoy joan jett so on here of course you have the title track and then also her cover of crimson and clover which was a big hit but uh yeah you know always looking forward to looking for joan jett stuff you know again i enjoy her work whether it be in the runaways or solo you know Next up, we have uh, Strifer, Soldiers Under Command, which I actually already have this on vinyl, but this is actually a white vinyl pressing, which is pretty cool. Um, I have the regular, oh, there goes the elephant condom. Um, I have the regular black one, but this is the the white vinyl, which I saw, that, saw the sticker on here. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, I definitely don't mind picking that up. Um, and again, another band that I'm always trying to get more stuff on vinyl is, is Striper. Um, they're on tour. I try to. I'm gonna try to go see them. I do enjoy their their music very much. Um, but yeah, the you know got a white vinyl one. And again, I always look look for that kind of stuff. You know, things kind of out of the ordinary and everything. But next up, we have Van Morrison Moon Dance, which is a great album. Uh, a lot of great stuff on here. Um, you have And It Stoned Me, the title track, Into the Mystic, uh, These Dreams of You, Everyone, Glad, uh, Glad Tidings. Um, there's a lot of great stuff on here. Um, finally, got, I've been wanting to get this on vinyl for a while. Finally did. All right. And then these are all ones that I got today at the new record store. And um, again, these were all decently priced. Good shape, you know, and can't complain. Got a few ACDC records. First up, we have Dirty Deeds, Done Dirt Cheap, which this was actually not released in America until after Back in Black. Um, yeah, for some reason, it didn't get a release over here. Once Back in Black blew up and became the album that it is, uh, they've re-released this one in America. So there we go. But, you know, apart from the title track, um, I enjoy this whole album. Um, Love at First Feel, Big Balls, um, Rocker, Problem Ch Problem Child is one of my favorite ACDC songs. 
Um, there's going to be some rocking. Ain't no fun waiting around to be a millionaire. Ride on is a great one. Squealer. Um, there's just a lot of great stuff on here. You know, classic ACDC, in my opinion. And then I picked up my favorite ACDC album. Well, my favorite Bon Scott ACDC album. Uh, Power Rage. I love this out. There's so many great songs on here that nobody really talks about. Um, Rock and Roll Damnation, Down Payment Blues, Give Me a Bullet, Riff Rap, Sin City, which is an amazing song. Um, What's Next to the Moon, Gone Shooting, which is my favorite Bon Scott ACDC song. Um, Up to My Neck and You, Kicked in the Teeth. Like, there's just so much great shit on this album. It's ridiculous. Like, so many great songs on here that, again, people don't really talk about you know they weren't there was a you know rock and roll damnation and sin city were like the two hits on the album but there's just so much great stuff on there um next up we have the last acdc one blow up your video which was a very popular album for them this was a big hit back in the day uh this was the biggest one since for those about the rock fly on the wall flick on the uh, flick of the switch weren't really popular but this one was um and this one's got good, like, Heat Seekers on here. I really enjoy that song. That's the way I want to rock and roll. That's a good one. And the rest of the album is good. Like, there's a lot of hidden gems on here that people don't talk about, you know. But a lot of great stuff on here. You know, very underrated. But, yeah, this was a big hit for them back in the day, you know. But, you know, good stuff regardless, in my opinion. Just checking something on my phone here. I'm actually coincidentally looking at a ACDC bootleg on vinyl, so we'll uh, just watch that here. I'll probably pause the video in a minute here to deal with this. But Next up, I got a couple of uh, April Wine albums. Um, they're a Canadian rock band that I've been really getting into lately. Um, I have always liked the song Rock Myself to Sleep, which was in Fright Night, which you will actually, it's not Fright Night, but you'll see the album that the song comes from. And a friend of mine, he's Canadian, and he really likes them, and he always recommended me to listen to them, and finally I did. So today, I picked up a few. I got First Glance, which is one of their 70s albums. Um, again, I'm not really too familiar with hit singles and stuff like that, but you know the couple albums that I do have of them, I do enjoy, so that's all that matters. Um, I screwed up. I already have this one, Power Play, but this was a couple dollars. And um, I think this one's in better shape than the other one that I have. I'll probably just keep both just to have them, um, you know. But this one I think is in better shape than the other one. But I, again, it was a couple of dollars. It's not like I paid 20 bucks for it. It's like, oh, crap, I already have it. No, it was a couple bucks. Uh, this one has Rock Myself to Sleep. This one's called Walking Through Fire. And the first song is the, is the one. Um, and again, that was included in Fright Night. I've, uh, I've always enjoyed that song and was always curious to find out more about April Wine. And finally, within about the last year or so, I finally did it, you know. And then I did get one live album. This is a Canadian import uh, live at the El Macombo when they opened for the Rolling Stones. So there you go. So pretty cool. Yeah, you know, and again... I'm looking forward to listening to those because, um, again, I've been really getting into them and enjoy their music very much. Um, I did get one, Allman Brothers. Uh, this is a live album. This is from back in the 70s. This one is Wipe the Windows, Check the Oil, Dollar Gas, which is, uh, this is after Dwayne Allman had passed away, so it's a collection of different um, shows. Uh, a lot of these shows are, are available completely, whether it's a bootleg or officially. But nice, really nice gatefold cover in there. Some nice pictures. And um, the first couple of albums are represented because, like, Jessica and, and stuff like that is on here from Brothers and Sisters. So there you go. But, yep, that is all oh, Brothers. Wipe the windows, check the oil, dollar gas. Uh, finally got this. I've been wanting to get this on vinyl for quite some time. Definitely needs no introduction. Black Sabbath Paranoid. Um, the only other Black Sabbath Ozzy record that I don't have is Volume 4 that I'm really looking for. Um, I think Sabotage I don't have, but I really want to get Volume 4 because the first four Sabbath albums are, are perfect. They're, they're the best ones, but Paranoid is definitely 
among the greatest. So there you go. Um, this next one, I actually have this on CD. I, this is how I kind of discovered this band. And um, I didn't know that there was a vinyl release of this particular compilation. So uh, one day I, I looked it up and found out. And I found it today. Really, really great shape. It looks pretty much brand new. And it was a really good price. And it is the Best of the Doors. And this is the 80s Best of the Doors. There's been multiple. But th again, this is kind of how I discovered the Doors. And, you know, once I found out this was on vinyl, I'm like, I got to get it. You know, I have to get the vinyl version. But, uh, yeah, very happy to pick this one up. Uh, and it's all their biggest hits on here. I don't have a lot of the door stuff on vinyl. Um, that and the, I think I have the first album, Strange Days, and maybe Waiting for the Sun. I think that's it. Um, again, I, I don't have many of their albums, but, you know, always looking for more Doors albums. I love the Doors. They're a fantastic band. I'm just going to pause this and take care of this. Okay, I lost that auction. That's just the luck that I've been having lately with eBay. But, oh well, moving on. Um, got another Rainbow album. Again, I don't have... I have one other Rainbow record. Um, but this one is Down to Earth, which has uh, Since You've Been Gone, which was a big hit for them. You know, it was a couple bucks. I figured, yeah, I really like that song. And I'll just, I'll pick this one up. But yeah, I don't have, the only other Rainbow record I have has been out of shape. Um, that's it. But yeah, I figured, why not grab this one? And then I have a couple, I think I have the first two albums on CD when Dio was still in the band. And last but certainly not least, the, uh, the last couple records here are all Rush, another band that I'm trying to get more, uh, not just vinyl, but in general, just get more stuff up. I don't have... Even on CD, I don't have a lot of Rush stuff. Um, this one I do have on CD. Uh, this is Fly By Night, their second album. This is the first one with Neil Peart. Or Peart, excuse me. Uh, Peart is the correct way to pronounce it. But this is a great one. I, I always listen to this one. There's a lot of great stuff on here. The title track, Anthem, Best I Can. Um, it has their first kind of opus song on here, which is By Tour and the Snow Dog. In the end is a good one. There's a lot of great material on here. So, yeah. There's that one. And then their third album, uh, Caress of Steel. And this one has uh, Best Steel Day is on here. Lakeside Park is on here. Um, you know, a bunch of good stuff on here. And this is a gatefold, which is cool. Just taking it. I don't think Fly By Night. Nah, Fly By Night wasn't a gatefold. This one is, though. Some cool, cool shots and, and the lyrics and stuff in there, which is cool. But I've always been a big Rush fan. They're just a very interesting band to me. Um, I know they kind of get shit and everything, but you know, I was all I have always liked them. That's just me, you know. And then last but certainly not least, I got a live album. I got All the World's a Stage. Um, now I thought that I had this on vinyl for years. But I didn't. I have um, Exit Stage Left on vinyl. But for some reason, why, I have no idea, I thought I had this one. And I used to see this everywhere, and I would just pass on it. Because I'm like, I already have that. I already have that. And then one day, I kind of looked through my older videos and stuff. And I was like, no, I don't have that, actually. So I saw it today. It was 10 bucks. I'm like, okay, for a double live album... That's a good price, and it's in pretty good shape. You know, I can't complain about that. And it's a really nice double gatefold. So you open it up, and you get, um, you know, kind of the production credits and everything, the other Rush albums that were available at the time. Because this was still earlier in their career, and then you get a nice, all the shots of the different members of the band. Because um, this came out in, what, 80, 81 maybe? I think. When, when was the copyright? Oh, whoa, I was way off. 1976, my bad. Uh, 1976. So the only albums that were available was the self-titled debut, which I don't have that one. Fly By Night, Caress of Steel, and 2112, which I have all three of those. Um, and then I don't remember what came out after this. But yeah, this is their first live album. And then Exit Stage Left is their second. So yeah, so there we go. So that is it. Again, I know it's a little long, but I did get quite a bit of things here. Um, you know, Record Store Day was cool to 
to go out and get some of the exclusive releases and then do some shopping today and a couple days ago and stuff. But, um, yeah, again, I need to kind of slow down with stuff and, and just save as much money as I can for now since I'm not going to be getting paid after the end of next month. But I'll, I'll be okay. You know, I'll have a job by then and everything, so I'm not really worried about it. But, yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I got some other videos coming up before the Q&A. And then Wednesday night, I will start recording the Q&A stuff. Oh, this is not the reminder for it. I'll do that tomorrow for people that want to leave questions and stuff. But, yeah. So, anyway, again, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care. I'll talk to you guys later.